Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Errol Flynn, Joan Bennett, Mary Oster, and Ralph Bellamy in Trade Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One of our stars on this stage tonight is distinctly out of his element. But we've tried to make up for that by finding a play that would make him feel right at home. To me, Errol Flynn always looks a little out of place on dry land. That's because I'm more used to meeting him on deep water, off the California coast, where our greeting is neither spoken word nor shaken hand, but a combination of signal flags that means hello from the Catalina Channel to the China Sea. Leaning against the mainmast, dressed in faded dungarees, Errol looks as though he'd stepped from the pages of a saltwater saga. So tonight he's fittingly cast in the play called Trade Wind. It's a four-star production. Co-star and co-starring with Errol Flynn, we present Joan Bennett, Mary Astor, and Ralph Bellamy. In the course of the play, we'll cover a lot of ground and the majority of the seven seas. And that's in keeping with the worldwide popularity of our product, Lux Toilet Soap. In any hemisphere, beauty is at a premium. And clever women ask for Lux Toilet Soap in just about every language. Trade Winds is a drama of love and flight of a wealthy society girl wanted by the police, and of a young detective who tracks her halfway around the world. It's the drama of a man and woman who were meant for each other but find themselves enemies on opposite sides of the law. Errol Flynn is our globetrotting detective, Sam Y, and the object of his globetrotting is Joan Bennett, who plays Kay Kerrigan, the same part she had in Walter Wanger's motion picture production of Trade Winds. Mary Astor is Jean, a secretary who has nearly as much trouble keeping up with the detective as he has catching up with the girl he's trying to arrest. Ralph Bellamy is Detective Blodgett, a little on the slow-thinking side. It's the role Ralph played on the screen, and one that did a great deal to advance his career. Now romance and adventure await us in many parts of the world as we raise the curtain on Act One of Trade Winds, starring Errol Flynn as Sam Y., Joan Bennett as Kay Kerrigan, Mary Astor as Jean, and Ralph Bellamy as Blodgett. In the black hours just before dawn, the city of San Francisco lies sleeping under a blanket of fog. There's a curious stillness in the air, broken only by the low moan of foghorns from the bay. High in a fashionable apartment building, a single light shines through a misty window. And now at the door of that apartment, a woman's gloved hand presses the buzzer. There's a long wait. And then at last, the door opens slowly. Who is it? Why, it's Miss Kerrigan, isn't it? Come in. I hope you'll pardon my keeping you waiting. I, I didn't expect a visitor at this time of night. Well, Miss Kerrigan, I assume you came here for some purpose. They found my sister's body in the bay. What's that? What'd you say? My sister. They found her tonight in the bay. Drowned. Drowned? Well, I can't believe it. She's so young, so lovely. How did it happen? You know how. Technically, it was suicide. Actually, it was murder. And you murdered her. Look here, Miss Kerrigan. It's natural you should be upset, but hysterics won't help. You murdered her. I'll overlook what you're saying. You're not responsible just now. But I haven't even seen your sister for over a month. So that's why she was so pale and silent these last few weeks. You wouldn't see her. The day must have been a relief. That's not true. It was never serious between us. Hers was well, nothing but a phase of... Passing infatuation for a man who belonged to the right club. And a man whose father's money could protect him from anything. Oh, I know. Your name won't even be printed. If she left any letters, they'll mysteriously vanish. There mustn't be any evidence to soil the name of Thomas Broom the second. We can skip the melodrama. Now, here, let me get you something to snap you out of. A drink. 
You could use it. The only thing I could use right now would be a gun. On you. Yes. It might help at that. At least it would make you realize what you're saying. And it wouldn't be murder. It would be execution. I have a gun right here. Take it, Miss Kerrigan. Go on, that's right. You see, I'm not afraid of you. Even with that gun aimed right at my heart, I'm not afraid. You wouldn't kill me because you know I'm not to blame. Your sister knew what she was doing. It was... to headquarters. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, hello, Chief. Is this you? Well, this is Detective Blodgett, Chief. Right on the job, as always. Yeah. I'm up at Broom's place, Chief, and I just got the whole case tied up. Yeah. The murderer of Thomas Broom is a girl by the name of Kay Kerrigan. Sure, I'm sure. First, she had a grudge against Broom on account of her sister. Second, there's a pair of woman's gloves here. Third, I just found a package of Marrick cigarettes on the floor. That's the kind she smokes, Chief. I ascertained it from her friend. That's right. So don't give it a second thought, Chief. The girl Kerrigan did it all right, and I'll have it for you inside of one hour. You were going to have her inside of one hour, Blodgett. I'm sorry, Chief Honest. I can't understand how she eluded me. Oh, no? Well, look at this. You see that picture? It's a picture of a ring, isn't it? Nice deduction, Blodgett. Yes, it is. Now read what it says on the picture. Ring pawned at Royal Palms Pawn Shop, Honolulu. By young woman giving name of Martha Bailey. Right. Now look at this design. Well, it's the same ring, isn't it? Well, read, read. Ring designed for Miss... Kay Kerrigan, San Francisco, 1929. There's your answer, Mr. Blodgett. While you were throwing a dragnet around San Francisco, Kay Kerrigan slipped through and pawned the ring in Honolulu. Honolulu. So that's where she's been hiding. Wait a second, Chief. Are we so awful sure this Kerrigan girl done the murder? Of course we are. Broom was shot in the base of the skull, which rules out suicide. What's more, there was no gun found in the apartment. And furthermore, the woman is obviously unmoral. Hmm? She was in a man's apartment in violation of ordinance number 693. Oh. Listen, Broom's father says she did it, the paper says she did it, so the public says she did it. And if we want to keep our jobs, we've got to get her. Well, that's a routine matter now we know where she is. Oh, and I suppose she's going to stay there and wait for us. Now, look, when she lands out of Hawaii, she's out of American territory. We've got to send somebody after her quick. Why don't you send Harry Faulkner? Now oh, we're getting somewhere. There isn't a more upright and efficient law enforcement officer in the land than Harry Faulkner. Oh, bludgeon. Why don't you get some educated party to read the papers out loud to you? Faulkner's in Europe on a smuggling case. And there isn't anybody else. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Chief, uh, what about me, Chief? You? Why, you couldn't trail a puppy with muddy feet across a white bedspread. There's only one capable man I know, and that's Sam Wise. Sam Wise? Oh, no, Chief, not Sam Wise. Why not? If it's a dame, Sam will get her. But it ain't been six months since you had to fire him off the force. Well, that wasn't entirely his fault. How'd he know that girl was the commissioner's daughter? But Sam, why isn't upright, Chief? He'll find her all right, but if he likes her, he'll keep her for himself. Sure, sure, he'll keep her for himself. For a while. But when he gets tired of her, he'll bring her back. Oh, Miss Day, get me Sam Y on the phone. I'm telling you, Chief, why he'll cast a definite reflection on the force. And besides, he'll double cross her. Oh, no. Not this time he won't. Because you're going along to what? Hello, Samuel Y. Investigation Service. Who is speaking, please? Just a minute. I'll speak and I ascertain his whereabouts. Uh, Mr. Y. Mr. Y., you're wanted on the telephone. I'm sorry, I'm in conference. But Mr. Y. Is... I said I'm in conference, Miss Bell, and I don't want to be disturbed. Tell whoever it is to call back, and I may speak to him later. And please don't bother me again. Thank you. Ah, oh, Miss Cartwright, where were we? You were saying my eyes were so blue. Oh, yes. Yes, your eyes. You know, Miss Cartwright, love like this only happens once to a man. Only once may he reach up his hand and touch the stars. Oh. But first...
first I thought I'd dreamed you. Help me to understand I'm not dreaming. Take me to walk with you along the stars. Say, excuse me. Who the... Who is this? I said I was busy. What? Oh. Oh, hello, Chiefy. A job? Oh, I can't right now. I'm in conference. What? Hey, Kerrigan. Oh, yes. I see, yes. Sure. Sure, I'll be right over. Uh, yes, goodbye, Chief. Sam, darling. Uh, Miss Cartwright, I've got to leave for a while. Don't move until I come back. Where are you going? Honolulu. Hey, wait! Miss Bell, Jean, where's my hat? Here. What happened to your, uh, conference inside? Oh, that's postponed. I've got a job. Do you really think this Kerrigan girl murdered him? Oh, so you were listening in again, eh? Yeah. You think she did it? Well, I don't try him. I find him. Besides, I've always wanted to go around the world... There must be quite a lot of undeveloped uh, territory out there. I've always wanted to travel myself. It's a nice assignment for us. Us? Can't you count? I'm going solo. What? And leave me here to stall off the rent and the telephone and the payments on the office furniture? Oh, no, you oh, don't. Oh, now, listen. Gee, honey, you don't think I'm leaving because I want to, do you? Now, wait. Don't try to get around me. I don't fall for Jean, that. Jean, look at me. A person like you. Why? Gene, this only happens once to a man. Don't you know that that going away from you is one of the hardest things I've ever had to face? Don't you know that, Jeannie? Oh, Sam. Close your eyes, Jeannie. That's right. Sam. And don't forget to store my tailor, too. Hey, come back. You can't... So long, Jeannie. I'll write from Honolulu. You big heel. <laughs> Sam, say more. Oh, oh, what more is there to say? You know, girls, this only happens once to a man. Only once may he reach up his hand and, and touch the stars. Take me with you to those stars, all four of you. <laughs> out of here, Sam. Oh, bludgeon. I told you to stay out of here. Now go on. No, I won't. We're here to find Kate Kerrigan. Well, I'm looking for it. Listen, Sam, I'm willing to overlook the moral aspects of the situation, but you know Kerrigan's not a Hawaiian. But this is the process of elimination. There's a few girls, and we'll have covered the whole island. And while you're here, what about those steamship officers? I checked them all. Well, check them again. Everything's got to be double-checked around here. Uh, Faulkner wouldn't employ these methods. They're not only immoral, but they're not modern. Well, they've been good for a long time. Now, girls, suppose you go on. I want to hear all about your work. <laughs> what does a man want to know about a beauty parlor for? Oh, that's very interesting. Girl goes in with no eyelashes, comes out, looks like Minnie Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Grandmother goes in, out she comes, skips off to kindergarten. Blonde comes in, comes out a brunette. As easy as that. Easy. Three hours hard work to make a blonde a brunette. We did one in two hours last week. Oh, a rush order? Yes, she was catching a boat for Shanghai. Shanghai. Ah, oh, well, well. Tell me, did she look like the girl in this picture? Hmm? Yes, that's the one. How did you know? Oh, just a hunch. Thanks, girls. Sam! Sam! Any luck, Philo? The man. best. Come here, listen. A small blonde woman sailed four days ago for New Zealand. No! Did she smoke marriage cigarettes? Well, they said she didn't do any smoking in public, but that didn't discourage me. Once a person acquires a cigarette habit, it's bound to come out. Hmm. She claimed to be a missionary. But it's obvious to me it's Kerrigan. In disguise. Roger, you've done a remarkable piece of work. It's just your deduction. Well, when do we leave for New Zealand? Tomorrow. Good. But we're going by way of Shanghai. What? So you want to work here, huh? I want to work anywhere. I was told that the Shanghai Cafe needed a piano. Yeah, that's right. American, eh? No, English. Ah, I see. So what kind of stuff do you play? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I was brought up on Chopin. Never heard of him. Can you play popular? I'd like to try. Well, looks count more than playing here. Okay, you're hired. Thank you. Do I start tonight? Yeah. And be sure to bring your police card. Police card? Yeah, that's right. All non-residents must report to the police before they can work in Shanghai. Oh, Oh, it's just a formality, unless, of course, you're a criminal. What makes you say that? Nothing. Why? Go on. Report to the police and be back here with eight. All right. Thanks. Hello. Hello. 
Oh, little Hop Sing. Uh, that is your uh, name, isn't it? Uh, Hop Sing, yes. Uh, At first, Hop Sing, I thought I'd dreamed you. Help me to understand I'm not dreaming. Help me Sam, to... Sam, I've got her. What? I got her, Sam. I got Kerrigan. Trapped a red-handed in the lobby of the hotel smoking a Merrick cigarette. Uh, pardon me, Hop Sing. Business after pleasure. And don't move until I come back. Where is she? I locked her in my room. I thought in the case of trapping a murderess, we could defy the convention. Hmm. Well, come on, come on, show me. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Just a minute, Sam. You can't be too careful of these cases. Maybe I better use my gun. Yeah. But make sure it's not loaded. Now, now come on. Stand where you are, Miss Kerrigan. I got you covered. Kerrigan. Hmm. Say, what is this? Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Y. Hiya, Sam. Well... Dr. Livingston, I presume. Say, what is this? Sam, will you do me the courtesy of telling this big lunkhead who I am? Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you had met. Dr. Livingston, allow me to present Mr. Blodgett. Charmed, I'm sure. Huh? Dr. Livingston is an old friend of mine from San Francisco. She's nice, but she's not Kerrigan. But she was indulging in Merrick cigarettes. <laughs> oh, I was aware if I kept smoking Merrick, you'd find me, and I'd find Sam. Very nice. Well, you might as well unleash her, Philo. She's nothing but a red herring. All right, but all these events prove just one thing to me. Terrigan's in New Zealand. Well, Jeannie, nice to see you again. How are uh, things at the office? Look here, Sam Wide. Don't get the idea that I'm following you. This is a pleasure trip. There was a time when I came under the heading of pleasure. Oh, I know. I was a simple, trusting girl. But now I'm a cynical woman of the world. You couldn't push me around now if I was on roller skates. Yes. Yes, you are a woman of the world. Poise, chic, taste. Expensive perfume. Expensive cigarettes, too. Tell me one thing. How'd you find out about those Merricks? Oh, you don't think you're the only friend I got on the police force? Oh. How was the Marine Corps when you left? Off on a cruise. And you know, one gets so lonely when you're alone. You're pretty far from home, aren't you? Oh, I've always wanted to see the world. I've heard so much about it. Yes, there has been a lot of talk. Mm -hmm. And this is just a sightseeing trip, eh? Merely. I felt I was getting into rather a rut at home. Uh-huh. Uh, nobody happened to offer rather a reward for Kay Kerrigan, did they? Not that I know of. There you go, talking shop again. Even in this quaint old Orient. You haven't changed a bit, Sam. Oh, yes, I have, Jean. At least, I found out a lot of things. You know, you have to go away sometimes to find out who you, who you really miss. And I've missed you, Jean. Oh, Sam. You know it, Jean. Your coming here is the, is the loveliest thing that's ever happened to me. Sam. Sam. How much is it, Jeannie? A hundred thousand dollars. How much is what? A hundred thousand dollars, eh? The irony of it. Oh, <laughs> I can see I've been in a fool's paradise. I thought you'd come all this way because... Oh, well, there's no good dreaming. Goodbye, little genie. I'm sorry it turned out this way. We might have made such such wonderful music together. Uh, Sam, uh, where are you going? Oh, out of your way, Jean. Why, don't you see? I dreamed of us working on this together. Sharing the reward. Going home together. And then... Well, who knows? Uh, Sam, uh, you were right, Sam. I came to tell you old man Brooms offered a hundred grand for Kerrigan, and I know where Kerrigan is. You sure? Absolutely. British passport under the name of Mary Holden. Hmm. Oh, you're right, so far. And she's booked passage on the steamer Hanoi, sailing for Singapore at 2.30 this afternoon. Now, Jeannie, don't try to be a detective. You're too sweet and feminine. But I checked the British consulate in the steamship office, even the boy that took her trunk. Hmm. Oh, that steamer to Singapore, that's just a blind... Kerrigan's on her way to a village in the interior. The police there will hold her until we pick her up. So now we'll hire a couple of horses and ride after her through the jungle. Uh, we're going horseback riding through the jungle? Well, sure. You're not afraid of snakes and tigers, are you? Oh, no, I'm not afraid of them. I, I'm just allergic to them. I tell you what, I'll stay here and take a shower and sort of rest while you go get her. Well, maybe that is the best idea. Oh, it was just selfish of me to want to take you out in that hot jungle and 
Well, I'll be back before you even know I'm gone, oh, sweetheart. Oh, Sam, I'll know you're gone. Yes, you may at that. Well, goodbye for just a little while, darling. Goodbye, Sam. Budget, budget. What do you want? Come on, Philo, we're catching the boat for Singapore. But I haven't got my things. Oh, the manager will forward our stuff. Come on. But what about my pajamas? Oh, you'll never miss them in Singapore. Come on, come on. Chopin wrote it was pretty nice, too. Hello. My name's Sam. Hello. Mine's Mary. Do you mind if I show you how it ends? I hope I know how it ends. You know, it's only fair to present Chopin's side of the argument. But I'll, um, I'll need that. My hand. What? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Silly of me. Yes. Thank you. Think about the music. Oh, but I can't. All I can think of is that we're wasting time. How? Well, I really ought to kiss you. Like this. Well, that was unexpected. Now what am I supposed to do? Oh, turn the other cheek. You behave like this everywhere, or just in the Orient. Oh, well. Seemed like a good idea at the time. I guess it wasn't. Anyway, thanks for the lesson. I mean, the music lesson. You're welcome. Promise to practice. Goodbye. Oh, no, not goodbye. I hate that expression. Well, afraid it's what you say when you're leaving somebody. Ah, but if you didn't leave, you wouldn't have to say it. I must. Oh, um, you've got my hand again. I know. I need it this time. <laughs> Good night. Wait! Won't I see you tomorrow? Well, it's a very small boat. But what about the day after tomorrow? Well, it's a very small world. <laughs> I dreamed about places like this and a girl like you. You know, a thing like this only happens to a man once. Only once may he reach up his hand and touch the stars. That, I believe, is known as a line. I, what? Oh, yes. I'm afraid it is. You read it perfectly. You must have rehearsed it a lot. I have. On every possible occasion. I'm a terrible egotist. Oh. Well, I rather hoped when I was ready to listen it wouldn't be a line. Or anyway, it would be a line tailor-made for the occasion. You waited. Not only tailor-made, but the brand new, shiny word, freshly minted. Bright words that that nobody's ever touched before. That Oh, that's a line, too. But not bad. I suppose you can't be blamed for sticking to proven methods. Oh, that's all I ever learned. I used the line when I sold newspapers on street corners. Monday's news on Wednesday morning. I used the line to get my first job. Everything I've got was by knowing when to turn it on. And off. Right. Well, I'm turning it off right now. And I hope this is the right time. Knock wood. Will that make it sure? Oh, it should. You see, where I was brought up, the kids didn't go in much for a prayer. That was softy stuff. So I never learned any. This is my way of praying by knocking wood. And I, and I want something that's beyond, that's beyond my power to get. You've been really honest with me, haven't you? Completely. Uh, for the last few minutes. I can't be any less with you. There's something I... Well, it's going to be very difficult to tell you, but I must... Oh, no, no, no. No, you mustn't. If there's anything unpleasant, don't say it, because I won't listen. But really, I... Oh, no, please. No, no. Oh, look, we've had a grand day, and there's a lot more ahead of us. Well, a few anyway. Let's take them and no questions asked. All right. No questions asked. After a brief intermission, our stars, Errol Flynn, Joan Bennett, Mary Oster, and Ralph Bellamy will return in Act Two of Trade Wind. Now, for a moment, we want you to listen in to a few of what we radio people call sound effects. Tonight, all our sound effects are going to be bells. Here's the first. Hear those little bells? If you have a very small boy in the house, maybe you recognize them right away. They're attached to a small pair of horse reins that belong to Junior Smith, age two. You can hear them tinkling, because right now his pretty young mother is giving him a farewell romp before bedtime. 
Now that is the clock on the living room mantel. It was a wedding present. Now it says to pretty young Mrs. Susan Smith that Mr. Smith will be home soon. So, being as clever as she is pretty, she bundles Junior into his crib, draws herself a tub of warm water, unwraps a nice, fresh white cake of Lux toilet soap, and then... Well, Sally, you tell them what happens then. Well, then Sue settles down for a few minutes' perfect relaxation in that nice, warm bath. She forgets about her housekeeping problems and about Junior's teething and just soaps herself all over lazily with Lux Soap's creamy, active lather. Let it carry away perspiration. Every single trace of dust and dirt. You see, she knows that this luxurious beauty bath will make her feel like new and leave a delicate, clinging fragrance on her skin, too. Thank you, Sally. You see, young Mrs. Smith depends on her daily Lux toilet soap bath, not only for a quick, refreshing pickup, but to make her sure of daintiness, of skin that's sweet. And that brings us to another sound effect. That is the Smith doorbell. Sue knows that it's Bill, so glad to be home and so eager to see his pretty young wife that he can't bother with his latch key. Well, she's ready to greet him in a fresh frock and a gay little ribbon in her hair. And as he takes her in his arms, he thinks how sweet she is. Every bit as sweet, every bit as thrilling as when four years ago, clever little Sue made young Bill Smith the happiest man in the world. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Trade Winds. Starring Errol Flynn as Sam Y, Joan Bennett as Kay Kerrigan, Mary Astor as Jean, and Ralph Bellamy as Bludgeon. <laughs> Armed with the knowledge that Mary Holden is the missing Kay Kerrigan, Sam Y is completely disarmed. For the first time in his life, he regrets being a detective. And now, with Kay, he's doing his best to forget it. They've just returned from a ride. And Kay, stretched out in a chair, is attempting to kick off her riding boots. Come on, kick! I can't! All right, wait. I've got a proposition to make. I'll help you off with your boots if you'll buy me a drink. Sold to the gentleman in riding clothes. Okay, put your foot up. Now, come on! Ouch! Take it easy. Ooh, whoever invented these things, anyhow. It's no use. Take a rest, Sam. Thanks. I'm sorry. Jeanette will do it for me. She's got the knack of it. Jeanette? I thought you were traveling alone. I was, but I ran into this girl. Her mother and father were missionaries, and they died of cholera, and she was stranded. Oh, I see. Here she is now. Oh, Jeanette, Jeanette. Jeanette, eh? Yeah, did you call me? Jeanette, this is Mr. Y. How do you do, Jeanette? Miss Holden and I were just saying what a frightful thing cholera is. There are worse things. Much worse. Oh, Jeanette, will you please order Mr. Y anything he wants, and then come inside and help me with my boots. I'll be right there. I won't be long, Sam. Right. Well, Mr. Y, can I order you a nice case of smallpox? Jean. Jean, darling, do you know what comes to me as a surprise? I'm really glad to see you. You dished me in Shanghai. Oh, a mistake, that's all. All that matters now is that, that I found you again. Go away, snake. Je Why, Jean, have you been drinking? Planter's punch. Nothing but fruit juice. Uh-huh. I heard it. And I know something else. I know that this girl is Kerrigan. Well, a woman's intuition is a wonderful thing. And so was a hundred dollars. Oh, sure, sure. Listen, Sam, I want half that reward, see, and I'm going to get it. Well, of course. We split it just as soon as we catch up with Kerrigan. Oh, stop that. You know as well as I do, Holden is Kerrigan. Oh, listen, Jean. I didn't mean to tell you this soon, but I think you've got the right to know. Kerrigan's in New Zealand running a shooting gallery. Well, who's this in this photograph? Buffalo Bill? Look. Kay Kerrigan, President Senior Class, prettiest, most likely to succeed. Even Blodgett will recognize her from that. And if you don't play ball, Master of Mind, that hundred thousand will be split between he and I. All right, you're right. I know she's Kerrigan. But I don't work like other people. You're giving me information. Uh, well, from now on, I'm going to be different anyhow. Cross my heart. And Jeannie, when we get that reward and get back to the States, well, you can't keep me from dreaming, Jeannie. Sam, you're a dope. What? I've fallen for that line twice, and twice is enough. You arrest that girl tonight or else, get it? All right, Jean, you win. Let's go outside. There's a moon you ought to see. I wouldn't want to miss anything. Well? It's beautiful. I didn't realize it until tonight. I've been looking at the world, but I haven't been seeing it. This makes everything seem pretty far away, doesn't it? Not everything. Just the wrong thing, the sad thing. 
All the lovely things are here. They are for me. Peace and sanctuary and a friend. I've always known since I first decided how it would be. I've known what I would do. Walk straight ahead to meet it without fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. Not as long as it's forever. Even if it's only for a moment. Oh, but it can't be. Don't be afraid. I'm not. Neither of us can ask for eternity. All we can hope for is a few great moments. Promise me, now, that we'll take each moment as it comes and treasure. And when it's gone, we'll let it pass without regret. Promise? Anything. If I go, when I go, even if it's tomorrow, don't try to follow me. The last moment will be dead then. Stay behind with what lives, the memory. You're asking an awful lot. The moments are slipping away, Sam. Oh, darling. Darling. Yes, Mr. Blodgett. What'll it be this time? Buttermilk, please. Buttermilk? Yes, sir. Hey, Matt, shake up another punch, will you? Yes, ma'am. Why, Dr. Livingston. Oh, hello. Well, it certainly is a pleasure to meet up with you again, Dr. Livingston. Likewise. Sam didn't tell me you were in Singapore. Oh, I just ran over to, to join a friend of mine, Miss Holden. Oh, she was on the boat with us. A very refined type. I admire refinement in a lady. I'm just crazy about <laughs> refinement myself. Hey, Mac, hurry up. Yes, ma'am. Where is punch? Thanks. Is that a alcoholic beverage, Doctor? A planter's punch? Oh, it has a dash of rum in it. Rum? For my blood pressure. Oh, medicinal purposes. Well, that doesn't count. That's just what I've been telling myself all day. You know, Doctor, this is really wonderful. We had to leave Shanghai in such a hurry, I was afraid our paths might not cross again. Oh, the coincidence is all mine, Mr. Blodgett. I'm always happy to meet up with a gentleman who recognizes a lady's finer nature. I've been thinking of nothing else. You see, a lady doctor like you that's uh, uh, traveled a lot could knock a lot of rough edges off a certain type <laughs> of man. Help him get on in his profession. <laughs> uh, now, I don't want to alarm you, doctor, but that's the way I am. Frank and straight from the shoulder. And if you only knew what a relief that is. Of course, she'd have to abandon her medicinal practice, and that would entail a, a definite tax sacrifice. Well, a lady like, doctor like that, after she got rid of all her patients, would have a right to think of herself. Dr. Livingston, you think just like me. Thanks. Oh, look. Look who's over there. Why, yes, Sam and Miss Holden. They seem to be very good friends, too, don't they? Yeah. A murder rap's not tough enough. She's got a fall for Sam Y. It isn't fair. I beg your pardon, Doctor? You'll understand when you're older, Junior. Come on, drink your buttermilk. <laughs> Jean, what are you trying to tell me? I just did tell you. Sam Y is a detective. Everybody's a detective. Even Blodgett thinks he's a detective. And you? If I was, I'd have nabbed you long ago. There's a hundred G's on your head, Toots. That's all he wanted, then. The money. Well, he's not going to find me. I'll get away some way. No, you won't. He'll get you. He's a terrible heel, but he's awful good at finding people. I'll go to Ceylon. I'll hide back in the hills. Uh Uh-uh, he'll find you. That's why I gotta stick with you and save you from him. And then there's my half of the reward, too. Yes, there's that. Oh, you're probably right. He'll find me. He doesn't deserve any reward. It's a man's world, that's what it is. Well, he isn't gonna get any reward. Nobody's gonna get any reward. What? I'm gonna help you get away. You help me, and now I'm gonna help you. Gene, I... I'm, I'm gonna help you... Get away to Salon. <laughs> oh, what's the matter, Jean? What is it? It's such a beautiful gesture. Giving up 50 grand for a friend. Oh, it's such a beautiful gesture. You can have your pick of the bungalows, Mim Said. Salon at this time of year is not overcrowded. Thank you. I think that one over there will do. I'll go get the bags off the dock. Right back, Ken. All right, Jean. And uh, now, if Mim Sahib would like to see... Wait a minute. What's that? Who's playing? Oh, that is one of our guests. He arrived last night by airplane. Oh. Well, perhaps I'd better go introduce myself. Good morning, Mr. Y. Good morning. I've been expecting you, Kay. So it seems. All right, let's have it over. Okay. I know it's a foul trick to persecute you like this, but I had to talk to you. 
Please do your job. I'm waiting. I'm going back to San Francisco and I'm caught for failure. I found you, but you're not the girl I want. Or you're the girl I want. Sam! No, don't interrupt. But Sam has a... No, please. Oh, I don't want to see that look in your eyes, ever. You needn't be terrified of me. Well, it hurts to see you afraid. Oh, no, don't stop playing. What? Go on, play. What's the matter? Sam, listen. There's a cobra. A what? A cobra. Right beside you on the bench. If you stop playing, he'll strike. A cobra? Okay. Okay. In the drawer. The table. There's a gun. Get it. Shoot the thing quick. Oh, I'm afraid. Well, so am I. Please, get the gun. Oh, shoot one of us. Quick, I don't care which. I've got it. Now, now move slowly. Easy. Come close to me. But don't take a chance on missing. Now aim. Oh, don't shake. Shoot. Shoot. Oh, you've got him. He's dead. Hey, he's dead. Am I? I think I'm... Oh. Oh. Okay. Man, may I urge on you? Oh. Mem Sahib. Good morning. A note for you, Mem Sahib. A note? Thank you. What is it, Terry? Why, it... Darling, yesterday you saved my life. You should have taken it. Today, I'm giving you back yours. When you read this note, I'll be aboard the 10 o'clock boat to Bombay. Goodbye, my sweet. Sam. Jean. Jean, pack everything. We've got to hurry. Are you completely crazy? I will be if we don't catch that boat. I've got to get him. I've got to. Well, this certainly makes a fool out of my beautiful gesture. Come on. What are you doing on this boat, Kay? Sam, I'm coming with you. Oh, you shouldn't have done this. Maybe not. But there are things you just can't I'm help. going a long way. But I'm going to San Francisco. I know. And I'm going with you. It's a long way. One of us is an awful fool. If you hadn't done this, you'd have had a chance. I know. A chance for my life. A life of running away and hiding and trembling at shadows. When we get back to San Francisco, I'm going to do everything Don't I stand. can to... We mustn't think about what's happened or what's going to happen. The only time for us is right now. And these next few weeks together. You're making a pretty big decision, Kay. Are you sure? A lifetime of running away. Or a few weeks drifting along the trade winds with you. There wasn't any choice. You're very sweet, Kay. It's a lot more than I deserve. Sam, I want to speak to you. Close the door, Philo. Never mind that. Listen, I know Mary Holden is Kay Kerrigan. Oh, really? How? I'll tell you how. I saw her picture in the San Francisco paper. The purser gave it to me. Look. Well, that's her, all right? Sure, and you've been with her all this time and didn't know her. Hmm, I must be slipping. I'd have ferreted out her identity long ago, only she didn't indulge in Merrick's. Oh. And here's something else. Harry Faulkner's on his way here. He's going to meet the boat in Bombay and put her in irons personally. He's a bulldog, that Faulkner. Blodgett, let me be the first to congratulate you. You've done great work. Oh, well, always on the job, you know. Now, look, if I were you, I wouldn't tell Kerrigan about this. Let her think she's safe, then she won't try to escape. What do you say? Hmm, maybe so. Ah, uh, eyes clear thinking there, why? Oh, thanks, old man. Coming from you, Blodgett, that... Sam. You better have a few things packed tonight. We're leaving the boat of Panani in the morning. Where are we going? To a place where nobody will ever find us. Sam, you can't do it. It'll mean the end of everything. Oh, you. I look at it differently. I think it's the beginning. But if you help me escape, you'll be a criminal yourself. I am already. I walked away on you in Salon. But, Sam... Okay, look. See out there in the ocean? There's a group of islands. The Lacadies. Where white people never go. That's where we're going to live. For the rest of our lives. Darling, I won't let you do oh, this. Oh, I'm afraid you can't stop me. You see, I always do everything I want to do. Everybody's dream. Tropical island, a million miles from civilization. You like a house? I love it. 
You know, some people mightn't approve of a marriage like ours in a missionary hut in Panani, but I think it'll hold. It was a grand marriage, Sam, and the loveliest ring a bride ever wore. Oh, let's see it. Yeah. What's that inscription again? Perfecto delecto, ten cents. Sweet. Not a bad cigar, either. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Y, you're growing old. Do you realize that a year from now you'll no longer be a bride? Oh, you're wrong, Mr. Y. Nobody ever grows old in the Lacadies. A thousand years from today, I'll still be a bride. I'd believe you for said a million. Oh, now, Sam, we can't expect too much. Why, a million years from now, you may be bored with me. You may even want a divorce. Hmm. You know, bride, I don't even like to joke about that. Neither do I. Funny. What? Oh, I was just thinking how we got here. Like the old sailing ships on the wings of the trade winds. Over the sea to safety. There's our highway, darling, out there. Let us home. Our sea. Our life. And will it always be just the sun, and the sea, and the trade winds? And you, and me. And nothing to be afraid of ever again? Nothing. Sam, what's that? No, a native seemed to be excited about something. They're running down to the beach. Sam, look. There's a boat there. A white man's getting out of it. it it's Harry Fawkes. Oh, Sam. But he's not going to get you. Oh, yes, he is, Sam. It's right that he should. You can't stop him. I get the first shot. Sam, please, you can't stop him. I've got to. Or we'll never be free. There isn't room here for the three of us. You and me and Faulkner's ghost. Sam, please. Waiting for us to make the first move. Please, darling, please. All right, come on, Why, and bring the girl with you. Come and get us. Oh, Sam, are you hurt? Oh, that's all right. I'm just scratch. Here, put these handcuffs on. Quick. Okay, Sam, put them up. Hey, Kerrigan, I arrest you in the name of the city of San Francisco. You're a little late, Faulkner. He's my prisoner. $100,000 on the hoof and bound to me by bands of steel. Look. Sam, you did this. The reward? Well, what else? See, baby, I'm losing you in any case. It's tough, but you can't expect me to pass up that reward, too. Come on, baby, we're going to San Francisco. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Errol Flynn, Joan Bennett, Mary Astor, and Ralph Bellamy, will return in Act Three of Trade Wind. Now in our short intermission, I have something important to talk about. Maybe I should say crow about. You want to crow about something? <laughs> that doesn't seem like you, Mr. Ruick. Well, this is something special. I just can't help crowing about it. I have some inside information that I gathered up right here in Hollywood. Oh, Mr. Ruick, we're all going to be interested in that. Well, now that's what I thought. This information comes from Irene Dunn. Irene Dunn? Hmm? Oh, isn't she lovely? Well, that's what I think. So when I saw her at a party the other night, I decided to find out something. You saw her the other night? What did she have on? Now, isn't that just like a woman? I don't know what she had on. I only know that she looked beautiful. But as I was saying, I've managed to get some real information about the beauty care she used. Well, as Lux Toilet Soap, you know she uses it. Of course I know she uses it. But I wanted to know how often she uses it and how she uses it. And this is what I've found out. She says she often uses Lux Toilet Soap for a beauty freshener during the day and absolutely always uses it for a facial before she goes to bed. Oh, yes, an active lather facial. You know, lots of women besides screen stars are finding out how marvelous they are. Well, Irene Dunn certainly is enthusiastic about them. So I found out exactly how she takes an active lather facial. I've, uh, I've written it down here. Sally, will you read it to the ladies in our audience? Surely. She says, It's easy to work up a rich lather with Lux soap. I pat it gently into my skin with upward strokes and little pats. Next, I rinse with warm water, then cool. Then I pat my face lightly to dry it. Thanks, Sally. Simple, isn't it? But Irene Dunn says these facials are important. And here's the reason. Lux Toilet Soap's active lather gives the skin protection it needs. The protection of thorough cleansing. Oh, of course, every woman thinks she takes proper care of her skin. But often without realizing it, a woman actually spoils her own look. And that's too bad. Because there probably isn't any woman who doesn't want her skin to be soft and smooth. As lovely as Irene Dunn. And this care famous screen stars use is so simple and so quick. Make a resolution now not to neglect your skin. Not to miss out on the appeal that it ought to have. Use Lux Toilet Soap, the soap famous screen stars use, regularly. 
Keep it always on hand. Buy it the economical way. Get three cake tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. on the third act of Trade Winds. A few weeks have passed. Back in San Francisco, the newsboys scream their headlines. Paper, paper, Kerrigan chapter arrived from Orient. Hey, you know about it? Tell me why the collection was coming. Tell me why they called it. Why it was like a murder. In her cell in the city prison, Kay reads the latest story. While Jean and Blodgett stand at her side, their eyes full of sympathy. Sam Y. celebrates $100,000 haul. Samuel Y. received his $100,000 reward today for building a gallows under Kay Kerrigan, some of which he'll spend on a housewarming party, featuring wine, song, and most appropriately, women. Give me that paper. I'd like to do that to the rat in person. Limb from limb. Don't abandon hopefulness, Miss Kerrigan. There's only been three women hanged in the history of California. And they were guilty of the most heinous crimes. Fiends in human form. Shut Stop. up. Hey, what did you kick me for? Don't try to figure it out, big shot, or your head will ache, too. I'm sorry, Kay. I don't want sympathy. I shot Broom and I'd do it again. If the jury feels I wasn't justified, I'm not afraid to take any sentence they want to hand me. It isn't shooting broom that I regret. Take it easy, honey. I'd rather hang 20 times than live with this, this filthy feeling that I trusted, worshipped that. Oh, I feel so so smeared with dirt. There's only one way I can ever get clean again. The jury will do that to me. Don't be too severe on Sam. I'll bet you right now he isn't feeling any too good himself. Well, if he isn't, it's because he forgot to kick his mother goodbye this morning. He hasn't got a mother. How lucky for her. Why, he's thinking of you right along, Miss Kerrigan. Only this morning he asked me to give you these gloves. They're not my gloves. Why, Miss Kerrigan, I found them myself. On Broom's desk. Right beside the corpus delicti. I tell you they aren't mine. No? Then maybe Sam intended them for a little remembrance for you. A remembrance? Is this a joke? Yes, that's it. A joke. A very funny joke. Please, honey. Why aren't you laughing? Everybody else is laughing. Laugh and have fun. Sam's made a joke and everybody's laughing. Can't you see I'm laughing, too? <laughs> All right, Blodgett, let's go. You've done your good deed for the day. But I don't understand. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so long, honey. We'll be back soon. All right, Mason, we're leaving. You know what? Kay's hatred of Sam amounts almost to an obsession. You dope. She'll go to her grave loving that heel. about the trial? Forget it. Did you see Kay? Yes, I did. Well, what Miss Kerrigan flatly denies ownership of the gloves and refuses to accept them as a gift. Good. I was sure they weren't hers. You were? To me, that's extremely bewildering. Listen, nimble brain, if one woman can get into a man's apartment, another woman can too. And if another woman could get in, she could kill Broom and leave her gloves behind. I don't follow you, Sam. Miss Kerrigan admits she shot Broom. Yes, in the heart. But Broom was shot in the back of the head. Furthermore, I went up to Broom's apartment and I found something you overlooked. I don't believe it. Oh, you don't? Well, in the bottom drawer of his bureau, I found a revolver loaded with blanks. Blanks? But that's not logical. You can't kill anyone with blanks. Well, that's the idea. A man like Broom would probably have plenty of threats. He kept the blank revolver handy to give to any furious female. Well, if he had one, he might have had two. He handed the blank revolver to Kay. She shot at him. He fell. She thought she killed him, and so she beat it to Honolulu. What do you think of that? I'm confused. Well, sure, but outside of that, what do you think of it? Well, fine. Well, good. Now, look, Philo, and concentrate. I'm a self-made All-American heel, right? No doubt there are those who would con- I concur. I hope they all concur. You see, if I've got them convinced, I'd sell my wife for 100000 The guilty party won't worry much about me turning them in, even if I find them. 
Not if it means giving up that reward. Oh, so your recent questionable conduct was merely a cover-up while you hounded the real criminal to earth. Can it be that lightning is struck? Sam, you must have endured untold suffering these last few weeks. Oh, thanks, Barlow. Sometimes the evidence of a good egg pops through that concrete skull of yours. Now, listen. Here's the plan, such as it is. There were six dames, count them, six, playing around with Broom when he was murdered. The gloves fit one of them. Well, they've all been invited to Broom's apartment tonight with their husbands. Your logic is the murderer will return to the scene of his crime? Right. I'm going to plant those gloves on the desk in the library. The guilty woman, and it must be a woman, will try to grab them. When she does, you'll grab her. Get it? You can trust me, Sam. You know me. Always on the job. I hope so. Well, all right, beat it and be at Broom's apartment at nine stop. How's it going, Blodgett? Okay, Sam. Five females have gone into the library and out again. Anyone touched those gloves yet? Nope, not yet. Okay, keep watching. I've got Mac and Joe standing by to help. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program of dance music to bring you a late bulletin from the Carrigan murder trial. Courthouse gossip has it the jurors stand nine to three for conviction. Keep tuned to this station for the latest development. We return you now to our main studio. Hey, there goes another female into the library. Yeah, Mrs. Ralph Cannell. Stand by, Blodgett. You want me to trail her? No, I'll do it myself. Good evening, Mrs. Cannell. Oh, good evening. I saw you pick up those gloves. Well, you can keep them. I've been meaning to return them to you for a long time. They're not mine. I must confess, though, they're so lovely, I was tempted to steal them. Oh, I'm sure banisters still keep them in stock. Well, they, they too look like a pair I lost some months ago. Well, they are the pair. You lost them right here. The night you killed Broom. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't shoot him. Don't take this, John, don't come in here. Well, you told him. I haven't told him anything. Be quiet. I'll handle this. Sit down, Mr. Cannell. Come on, Elsie. Let's get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. What's the hurry? I'm not going to ask you to talk. I know the answers anyway. Mr. Cannell, you bumped Broom off when Kerrigan botched the job. That was a break for you. You knocked him off, then pinned the rap on Kerrigan. Only she thought she shot him in the heart when the job was actually done with a bullet in the back of the head. Listen, you can't intimidate. Oh, not that it's any of my business. I've got my hundred grand. I'm satisfied. Oh. My apologies, old man. I'd forgotten where your best interests lay. Yes, I shot Broom, just like you'd shoot a dog. But you won't talk. Even if you did, no one would believe you. Not without a witness. And my wife can't testify against me. Oh, you're smart, Cornell. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't prove your confession without another witness, could I? Okay, Sam, I got every word. Nice work, Philo. Why, Why, you... Look out. Oh! Sam. Sam. Did I... Did I... Kill him? No, you got him in the arm. Nice shooting. Gee, I was afraid I... Oh, gosh. Sam. Oh. Hey, Mac. Go. Take this guy, Connell, out. Oh, and yeah, bring in a stretcher. We've got an unconscious cop. Now, let me see, Mr. Y. Two tickets to Bombay. Your passage to the Lackady Islands, you'll have to arrange for yourself. Oh, I've done that before. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, say, clerk, are my tickets ready yet? In a moment, Mr. Budge. You? Where are you going, Philo? I'm going on a honeymoon, too. No. Why not? I'm getting married. Well, well. Who's the lucky woman? Someone I know. I guess you do, all right. And you know what? She's going to give up her whole medicinal practice for me. Oh, Dr. Livingston, I presume. There they are, darling. All right. I was almost afraid that they wouldn't be here. But it was all a dream. Darling, has it really happened? Were we here before? Am I really free? Over the sea to safety. On the wings of the trade winds. Oh, darling. You know, this only happens once to a man. Only once may he reach up his hand and touch the... What? Oh, sorry. (laughs) For a moment, I forgot. Okay. I've got those new words. All bright and shiny. They're inside, but... uh, I don't seem to be able to get them out. I know. There'll be time. You see... This is it, darling. This is eternity. Eternity. Knockwood. Yes. Knockwood. The 
Gang Plank is down, and Earl Flynn, Joan Bennett, Mary Astor, and Ralph Bellamy are all coming back. Uh, should be, for a good and call. If anybody's missing, you can get Sam Y. Flynn to track them down. And then we can all go looking for Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> or I can call out my Northwest Mounted Police. They always get their man, and I've got a, a whole garrison at Paramount waiting for the shooting to begin tomorrow. Of course, we're only shooting with cameras. Oh, there won't be a cloudy day for miles around, as long as those redcoats are in sight, Mr. DeMille. Well, they can't be much brighter than the posters I've seen around Warner Brothers. What's this Virginia City thing you're mixed up with, my two-gun friend? Well, stranger, we made a picture called Virginia City. What those Hollywood folks call a premiere is going up in Virginia City and Reno. That's up Nevada way on March 16th. We're all riding a covered wagon up there for the celebration. Mighty pretty country up there, stranger. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Miss Astor, ma'am. We think so. Mighty pretty country right here, stranger, with gals like Miss Astor and Miss Bennett around. Why, thanks, stranger. Say, wait a minute. You've got me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you all come along, all of you? <laughs> Mr. DeMille? Uh, I'd like to, Arrow. There's a Northwest Mounted Police starting tomorrow and an important event coming up in the Lux Radio Theater. I... I'm afraid I can't make it. Oh, what's the important event? Well, next week we're going Before to... Before you tell us what it is, Mr. DeMille, may I say a word about the product that makes the Lux Radio Theater possible? I know something about that product because I've used Lux soap myself for a long time. And I can recommend it heartily as a complexion care. I agree with you on that, Joan. And I think every woman will. You can't beat Lux soap as a safe and thorough help for your complexion. But what's that big show you mentioned for next week, Mr. DeMille? Next Monday night... The Lux Radio Theater presents My Son, My Son with the same stars who will be seen in the picture soon to be released. Brian Ahern, Madeline Carroll, Lewis Hayward, and Josephine Hutchinson. The novel My Son, My Son, written by Howard Spring, was a nationwide bestseller. And now Edward Small has given this story a, a fine screen production. It's a drama of a father and son and a woman who affected the lives of both of them. A drama of deep conflict and strong emotion. You'll hear it from this stage next Monday night with the original screencast. Josephine Hutchinson as Nellie, Brianna Hearn as the father, Lewis Hayward as the son, and Madeline Carroll as the woman loved by both of them. That sounds like a very stirring play, Mr. DeMille, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Good night, sir. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. It was a happy trade win that brought you four here tonight. Sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Brianna Hearn, Madeline Carroll, Lewis Hayward, and Josephine Hutchinson in My Son, My Son. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from.